Hello everybody, my name is Zool, and welcome to my guide on how to get Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 1 running in an HD widescreen resolution. This video is going to be covering a lot more than in some of my previous videos, so if you've seen those, this is going to cover a little bit more. We're using the most modern techniques, we're going to be using some additional mods to help upscale the HUD to get some extra menus working properly, and we're also going to be getting the cutscenes running, um, some AI upscaled cutscenes. I can't wait to get into installing this, it's not going to be too hard, but before we can get started there's a couple little disclaimers. The first is that I'm using the Steam version of the game, so if you have the Steam version that's fine, if you have another version it's also fine, but you might run into some small issues. If you have the original disc version of the game, make sure that you download and apply the 1.03 patch, which I will link down below. Uh, and if you have the Amazon version of the game, you need to apply the sound and movies fix, which will also be linked below. Other than that, you should be pretty much good to go. Another thing that is very important to note is that if you are going to be using the KOTOR community mod builds, which I have installed on my computer right now, if you're going to be using those, you have to install that first before applying any of this widescreen patching. If you don't want to use those builds, it's fine, but if you do, do that first, then come back and watch this video for widescreen. Hopefully I'll have a guide on how to get that running for you pretty soon, so keep an eye on the description. There's also one other issue that I've noticed coming up a lot on some of the comments of my other videos, and that's display scaling. So this is a very important thing for you to fix, especially if you have a higher resolution monitor. Uh, right click on your desktop and go to display settings. Make sure you have your main display selected. Scroll down to where you can find scale and layout in Windows 11 and you're gonna go ahead and make sure that this is set to 100%. Even if a different size is recommended, go ahead and just set that to 100%. We need it to be there. With that kind of housekeeping out of the way, I think we can get into the actual uh, modding. So let's go do that now. The first thing we're gonna to need to do is open up the folder where Netsy Old Republic is installed. I'm gonna put the default addresses somewhere on screen, but I'm using the Steam version as mentioned, and there's a very easy way to open up the folder. Go into Steam, right click on your game, go to Properties, Install Files, and then right here, you can go ahead and hit Browse. That should open up your SW KOTOR folder. Inside this folder, we are gonna be looking for something called the swconfig.exe. Go ahead and open that up. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and make sure that your settings match what you see on my screen right now. Once you've done that, head over here and click apply. Now that we've done that, we also need to go ahead and edit the swkotor.ini file, which you can see right here. Right click on it, select open with, and select notepad, which should open up a notepad file, which looks like this. Once it has, scroll down until you see the graphics option settings. Uh, you can see mine right here. Somewhere under this, it could be in a different order, there should be an entry for width and an entry for height. Go ahead and update these to your monitor's resolution. You can see I've set my width to 2560 and my height to 1440. After that, hit File, Save, and you're good to go. All right, next thing we need to do is download two files. The first of which is the KOTOR Editable Executable that can be found on DeadlyStream.com. Head over to the link in the description, go to this files page and click download this file. We're also going to be needing to download a tool called Universal Widescreen. This can be downloaded on the widescreen gaming forums and you can download it by clicking this little UniWS zip area right here in the corner. To make things a little easier to look at, I did drag both of these to my desktop and now I'm going to extract them. You can extract them with any tool of choice like 7-Zip, WinRAR, or whatever. I will be using Nanazip by clicking here, going down and extracting this to its own folder. And I will be doing the same for the editable executable. Now that we have all the files extracted, go ahead and open up the editable executable folder. There'll be a readme and a .exe. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this .exe and we are going to replace the one in our SW KOTOR folder. Copy it to your SW KOTOR folder and replace. Then I would actually recommend deleting uh, the original one in here. We're just doing that so that there's only one executable on your computer and you don't accidentally patch the wrong one. Next up, we're going to go ahead and open up the UniWS folder that we downloaded earlier, and we're going to launch the UniWS.exe. That's going to give you a little uh, window like this. What we need to do now is go to this drop-down menu and we're gonna scroll down 
until we can find Star Wars KOTOR 1024 by 768. Make sure you select this interface. After you've done that, we need to go ahead and actually find our game's uh, executable. You can click the find it for me button, but if you're like me and you have a ton of storage on your computer, this can take a while, so you can also find it manually. In my case, that's in games, Steam library, Steam apps, common, SW KOTOR. Uh, you'll know you have the right place and the correct executable if you select the folder and the width and height are actually filled in right here. So now all you gotta do is add your width and height into these boxes. Once you've typed those in, go ahead and hit the patch button. When it's done, you should get this. It says game patched successfully. Hit OK. And then you can close out of this. And we've gotten the game at its most basic version of widescreen. OK, I'm in the game. And as you can see, things are running in widescreen. If they're not, go into the options menu and make sure you're set to widescreen. Uh, but you can probably already tell that things aren't exactly perfect. The heads up display and the menus are not working. So let's go ahead and take care of that now. All right, so in order to fix the GUI and the menu, we're gonna need to download several mods. I'm getting all these mods from the KOTOR Community Portals Guide, which I would highly recommend. You can read about it here. I'll link it in the description as well. The first mod you need to download is the widescreen cockpit and racing track on Manon. This is gonna fix some clipping issues, basically. Head over to Nexus Mods, go to the file section, and make sure that you manually download this mod. The next mod is a very important one. It's the high resolution menus. This is gonna be what actually fixes the weird thing being up in the corner. Go ahead and download this file as well. After you've downloaded that, grab the HDUI menu pack from Deadly Stream, the Workbench Upgrades screen, pretty good icons, Upscaled Computer, the Widescreen Fade Fix, and the K1 Made Menu Widescreen Fix. Most of these mods are pretty self-explanatory, but again, you can check out the description to learn a little bit more about them. Okay, I have all those files downloaded to my desktop, and I have my uh, SW KOTOR folder from my Steam library open uh, on the right-hand side here. Uh, the first thing we need to do is extract all of these files. I'm going to select all of them, and then I'm going to use Nana Zip. I'm going to click Extract To. Uh, and it's going to open them each into their own folder. So as you can see, I've extracted them, kind of organized them right here, and we're going to go ahead and install them one by one. Now I'm doing this after I've installed the community builds, so there might be some overriding here. If you're not using those builds, your override folder is probably empty at that point. That's fine. So let's go ahead and start installing. We're going to start with the WS models file here. I'm going to drag this folder over here. Then in my SW KOTOR folder, I am going to go ahead and open up the override folder. Uh, if yours is empty, again, that's totally fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on one of these files, hit Control A to select all of them. Then I'm going to drag them and copy them to the override folder. If it prompts you to replace, hit yes. OK, next up, we're going to be doing the K1 high resolution menus. What we need to do for this is head over to our SW KOTOR folder and locate the swkotor.exe. This is the file that we patched earlier in this guide. Go ahead and cut this and then paste it inside the K1 high resolution menus folder. Once you've done that, go ahead and run the high res underscore patcher dot bat. You don't want to run the exe, you want to run the dot bat file. Once you've done that, you're going to get a screen that looks something like this. The first thing you need to do is enter the width of your screen, which in my case is 2560, then the height, which in my case is 1440. Then it's gonna ask you if you would like to adjust the letterbox proportions. In most cases, you're going to go ahead and hit no. However, for certain resolutions, which I will display on screen, and as people find more resolutions that are specific to this issue, I will add it to a comment in the description, you're gonna need to hit yes. This also includes some 2K plus resolution. So if you're on a very high resolution monitor, you might need to hit yes. Now, what will happen if you do this step wrong is the dialogue text will be cut off. If you find that happening for yourself, come back to this section of the guide and sort of redo things. But instead of hitting no, hit yes or vice versa. In my case, though, I am going to hit no. Then it's going to ask you the name of the file we wish to patch, which is swkotor.exe. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Uh, a little dialog box should pop up over to patch, and then we can press any key to continue. If you do run into any letterboxing issues, please check the description where I will post a small addendum showing you how to restore this backup file that you can see right here on screen. However, in my case, we're just going to go ahead and move the one that we just patched into our SW KOTOR folder again. So I will cut and paste this. 
Once you've done that, you need to install the heads-up display files. To do that, locate your aspect ratio, which in my case is 16 by 9, then locate the HUD files that match your resolution. So in my case, 2560 by 1440. Once you have found uh, that file, open it up. And then in your SW KOTOR folder, open the override file. Again, you'll see all of the files here from me installing the community patches, that's fine. Select any one of the files in the GUI folder and hit Control A to select all. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to drag and drop these into our override folder. And with that, we have patched the heads-up display. So let's go ahead into the game and test it out and make sure that the dialogue is working properly. Checking if things are working is super easy. All you need to do is launch the game and see if the conversation with Trask at the beginning appears normally. The next mod is actually a very easy install. The menu pack simply has files in the override. Open that up, select all of them, and drag them into your game's override folder. The workbench screen is a similar override install with just two files to drag and put over here. For the mod Pretty Good icons, there's a slight complication in how we install that. We're gonna open up the TPC folder, then we are going to hit Control A to select everything once again. Now, if you're following the KOTOR community mod builds, uh, when you drag these over here, it's gonna say, hey, there's some files. Um, it'll be some amount here. Would you like to overwrite them? Uh, for this case and this case only, you're gonna hit skip. For the upscaled computer mod, simply grab the three files in here and place them in your override folder. For the KOTOR 1 fade fix, again, simply find your resolution here and move the fade GUI into your override folder. Finally, we have the main menu widescreen fix. In here, we have two folders. The first is for override. This is just a simple loose file installation. Copy those over to your override in the game. Then we have the optional files. These just change the logo a little bit. I personally like to use the vanilla logo upscaled. It keeps the game original, but it looks a little bit better. So if you wanna use that, open it up, grab this file, drag it uh, into your override file. Okay, so I'm in the game now after all of that. As you can see, the main menu looks quite a bit nicer. Let's go ahead and load a save and check things out. All right, and yeah, I loaded up my save and everything looks good. As you can see, um, you know, our heads-up display works, our mouse accurately tracks the position, and yeah, a lot of the menus and stuff are in HD as well. One thing that will not be upscaled is the map. We currently don't know if that's possible. Don't worry about it. Everything is fine. It still works. So that's pretty much it. Uh, well, actually, there's one more thing, and that is the cutscenes for the game. So far, we've been doing a lot of the in-game stuff, but we haven't gotten the cutscenes to play at our nice resolution, and watching 800 by 600 cutscenes isn't the best. So let's go ahead and get that dealt with. Getting your cutscenes running in HD is actually super easy these days. We're gonna be installing a mod that has used AI to upscale the cutscenes. It makes them look a little sharper, it gives them the correct resolution, and takes a lot of the tedious work out of things. In order to get that going, head over to Nexus Mods to the KOTOR 1 Remastered Cutscenes mod, head to the file section, and from here you are going to go ahead and find your resolution, in my case it is 1440p, but you should find whichever resolution makes the most sense for you and go ahead and download the file. Uh, to save some time, I've already gone ahead and done that, dragged it to my desktop, and extracted it using NanaZip. Uh, so I have a folder right here. Inside this folder, you'll see a lot of .bic files. These are your movies. In the SW KOTOR folder, open up the folder called Movies. From here, you're gonna need to do something with these. You can either select them all and back them up into another folder, or I'm just gonna delete them and replace them with these new files. Once you've gotten rid of all the movies, go ahead to the ones that you just downloaded, select all of them, and drag them into the Movies folder. This should be fine. Uh, however, I actually like to take things one step further than this. I scroll down to the bottom where you have the Bio logo, Lek logo, and Legal, and I delete these. Those are just the intro cutscenes. I don't like having to watch them every time I launch my game. You get rid of them, jumps you straight into the main menu. All right, well, that is all we have for now. I hope that you enjoy uh, and have some fun playing Night Sealed Republic. Hopefully, I will be on to some other videos soon. I'm planning to cover the uh, KOTOR community mod builds. So if you're interested in that, let me know with a comment down below. If you have any other feedback, I'd love to hear it from you. Uh, as always, I have been Zool, and I hope that you have an excellent day.